back when they, they not all stations have all the automated payment where you type it in, where you're sort of like just, just pumping the nozzle ever so slightly because you're like, get those I, extra. I, I can't go off $5. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> One time, I, I used to spend my money so much, I would try and get it to be like $5.02. Bro, so it would round I was just down. about to say that. It would round <laughs> so down. It would round down. I remember that. I was it's like, so I was stupid. so, so broke that I would just try and like get that two cents everywhere I went. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the 5,000 Week Journey podcast. Hope you guys are enjoying your 5,000 weeks, and I am joined today with my co-hosts, Colby and Edson. How are we doing today, guys? Good, man. Absolutely sensational. How are you doing, Blake? I'm doing fantastic. Awesome. Um, we're obviously enjoying our last few moments together. I'm, uh, Shit, what's I'm, happening? I'm about to... Your 5,000 weeks I'm are leaving, coming to an end. I'm leaving. Yeah, 5,000 weeks <laughs> coming to an end. Jeez. I'm leaving forever. <laughs> Now, nah, just for a couple of those 5,000 weeks, going to Melbourne and going to Sydney. Yeah. Awesome. It's, it's, gonna be, uh, I, 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 it's actually escaped me just a little bit. What exactly are you doing in, in Melbourne and Sydney? So the Melbourne is family. So okay, we're going yeah. there for, I think it's like our great auntie's birthday. Oh, so that's it's also my awesome. sister's birthday. Yeah, so we're spending all of mum's family's in Melbourne. Yeah, right. Um, and I just love Sydney. And one of my <laughs> friends lives there. So I'm staying with him for about two weeks there. Um, and just, yeah, enjoy the Sydney culture. Mm. It's yeah. awesome, man. Have so you been to? Have you guys been? Yeah, I know you're from Melbourne. Yeah, I've yeah, been. Melbourne. I've been to Sydney and Melbourne. So I went to, I went to, um, I think I went to Sydney to see Coldplay. Um, I might be getting this backwards. Uh, I think I I went to Sydney and Melbourne. One of them was to see Coldplay, which was uh, an amazing. It was years ago, but amazing concert. Me and my dad uh, went. You. We we went over Eastern Paro, States Paro. just to see Coldplay. Uh, the other was to see the UFC, which was when Holly Holmes and uh, Ronda Rousey fought, and that was. Uh, that Have you been to a UFC? It's 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 wild. Like it, what will actually blow your mind is when it's quiet. It is so quiet, like you can you can like, hear, while they're fighting. Or? Yeah, like sometimes when they're fighting, like people cheer and all that, and you're allowed to cheer, but there's these moments where like the fight's just kind of going on, and no one's making any noise, and it's just you can hear the little slaps from the kicks and the punches. That's how quiet it is, even if you're sitting all the way at the back. Because there's, it's just, just so dead silent, and then everyone just sort of just screams, and there's all this noise. It's 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 crazy. It's so so much different. Um, like there's a lot more energy, like any yeah. sport, but it's so much different in terms of, uh, like what's going on sound wise in person than um. Have you ever, anything else? <laughs> all I can think of when you're saying that is when I'm at a, I've been at like parties or like big group gatherings. And like at one point, everyone stops laughing and stops talking at the exact same time. <laughs> and then you look, everyone sort of looks around. Has any of you guys ever experienced that? Yeah. Yeah. Right, I've had that a couple of times and you look around and everyone starts laughing. <laughs> it's so it's weird. so far, like 20 people, everyone just stops at the same time. Wait, let's so do it right weird. now. No. Oh. <laughs> uh, but uh, well, anyway, Blake. Yeah, let's, uh, uh, let's why, why, don't we, why don't we jump straight into the, uh, the topic? So yeah. this week we're talking about why a coffee a day will make you broke. And I think that's a bit of a confusing and a little bit of a confusing and fun topic, mm. which I, I think Ayrton is most educated on. So I think I'm going to let you start. Um, well, I love coffee. So the first <laughs> like will coffee, I'm sure the first person is like, people are thinking are like, why will this coffee make me broke? <laughs> that's obviously not like the true form that like you're going to be yeah. broke. But do you want to explain the concept? So there's a yeah. book uh, called The Latte Factor, uh, which you got in front of us if you're watching YouTube. Uh, and it's about the principle about a latte a day, um, what well, doesn't say in the book to keep you broke, but we're using that analogy, that in life we don't add up the small little things that we spend money on, mm. right? And uh, a lot of people, and, and in this book there's a story of a, 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 long, a young lady who's in New York and she goes to this coffee shop each morning. She gets a coffee and she goes to her corporate job and she's struggling to get by paying her rent and her bills and there's this painting within the shop, in this coffee shop. And she keeps going there every day and she's like, I really want that painting. So she goes to the person that owns the shop and she says, hey, I, how much for that painting? He's like, that's $1,500. And he's, she, she starts to sit down. It's like, oh, I don't have, have $1,500. And he's like, that's okay. We can work it out and come each day and I'll teach you a new lesson on how you can afford this painting by changing some of your small money habits. So each day she comes in, she learns a new lesson. But the main analogy that I'm trying to share and what this whole podcast is about is she would be buying that latte each day, which is around $5. And which most people are spending and buying coffee or buying things like this, right? And it's called the latte factor. Is they're spending money on things that they don't realize can add up. Because if you think about it, if you spend $5 a day, 
for a whole year. I don't know the exact number, but it worked out for the painting was 1500 bucks. So it's around about 300 days, right? If she put $5 yeah. away each day, she'll be able to afford that painting within less than a year. And that was just by replacing the latte that she was having, which is the coffee. But most people are having this coffee and it's not just the coffee. 1,825. Awesome. For what, what's that? <laughs> 365 days in a year, yeah? Yeah. Pretty sure that's 1,000. Oh, you said less than a year. Yeah. At least you've got, like, we've got a calculator we can work it Yeah, out. yeah. <laughs> but the, the example is, it's like, so said like 300 days in a when year. When she started to sit down with this guy, um, she would start, uh, and the guy's name was Henry, and he was the owner of this coffee shop. And they talked like, it's more, it's a, it's a finance book for people who are learning finance, right? That's the basic principle of it, how to save money and invest. Um, she started to find different areas of her life, different parts of the day that she'd spend more than five, ten dollars at the next for lunch, right? And she was complaining about not having money. She was complaining about not having money to go out and buy the things or do the things she was passionate about, right? And this is the same example of like, you know, conversations I have with people every single day because I sell coaching programs. People are like, oh, I don't have the money to invest. But they'd happily go buy a coffee each day, right? Or they would spend 5, 10, 15, 20 days and eating out, like eating out of $100, and somehow find hundred dollars to spend on a Saturday night. And yeah, yeah, that's a huge yeah. one. And and this is like it's and for me no, and see no problem wasting. Yeah, that. and the reason why like this is a really powerful topic, and I'll share my story is that I was like two years ago uh, mm-hmm. in my business, two thousand nineteen, struggling with money, and you know I was earning ten thousand dollars a month, and it was going out as fast as it came <laughs> in, faster, <laughs> and like I was quite unsure. I was like, what the hell is going? I had no savings had no money in the bank and I was with my girlfriend at the time, we were quite stressed out because like I was meant to be the guy bringing the money. Mm. And this is when I read this book and this is why it's around the factor of the latte. I started to calculate what I was actually spending my money on. And when it took me to look at my bank account, wow, how much I'd been spending on eating out and coffee. And like I was getting coffee every single day, right? I started to change those things. Instead of buying that coffee every day, I created different bank accounts and started transferring them, that $5 at the small budgets per day into different bank accounts. And I started having coffee at home. And now I have a coffee sh- machine at home that cost me like 750 bucks, which people think, oh, that's expensive. But I have a coffee every single day at home. Yeah, it's a long term. It's, it's a long, long term. Yeah, and this yeah. is like why this, this topic, and, and we'll jump for you guys as well. Um, and that's why I want to share my story. Is like, I was stuck and I didn't know what the problem was. And I was earning the same, like that. I was earning $10,000 a month, which for some people is a lot of money. For me, it was going out faster than it was going because I didn't have the right mindset around money. Because we don't, we don't get taught that in school. Like they don't teach us that. Right? Just so simple like putting money away, creating an emergency account. Like now I have savings. I have emergency savings. I have business savings. And, you know, I can still scale back to $10,000 a month if I want to have a cruisy business. And it's not going out as fast as it was because I've calculated that. So that's like the latte effect. is like a lot of people looking forward to the weekend. They're looking forward to, you know, spending money on a night out. But if they just started to calculate where they were spending their money and like maybe cut back on those coffees and have one at home, it won't, you won't feel like you're broke. You, you don't need to go to get a new job or don't need to get a pay rise. You know? yeah. So I want to, um, so throughout the podcast, because I'm the one who's probably the most reckless with money, I'm still young, learning, uh, figuring out. So I want to play a bit of devil's advocate. Yeah. So I'm just imagining someone's probably screaming like, but I love my coffees every day. Like I love going to the same coffee shop. <laughs> like I don't want to stop buying coffees obviously the principle is not just about that mm. but what if it's like people are in these habits but they don't want to change them like what's some other ways they can or, or is it what's some other areas they can look at where they might be wasting money i mean <laughs> that kind of brings up the question when you go oh look i want to improve but i don't want to change this bad habit mm. it's like well, okay <laughs> what exactly do you want to do then uh, in, improving requires getting rid of bad habits. Now, I'm not saying coffee's a bad habit. Like, obviously, you guys know I'm not a guy who drinks coffee, but that doesn't mean that I haven't had my, my little things before. One of the one of the big things I used to have when I was younger, um, oh, actually, only like three years ago, is I don't know. Do you guys know Cobb's Popcorn? Like, those those green popcorn packets like that? Like the colorful not the green popcorn. ones, but the colorful ones. Uh, so, like, just the packet's green. It's like the really nice Cobb's, like, popcorn. I'll say yes, but I don't know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But I, I know what popcorn if, is. If so. I grabbed a packet, you'd know what I meant. It's it's awesome. Um, now, what I used to do back when I lived uh, a bit further south is there was this nice, um, really nice, fresh uh, fruit store that had all the best stuff. I would go in and almost every day I would get Cobb's popcorn and uh, 500 grams of dates. I love dates too much. 
And that would be like 10, 10, 11 bucks. It's a lot of dates. And I would do that every day. And I would get all that stuff and I'd just do it all the time. And then I went, man, it's been like 20 weeks. This has cost me $1,000. <laughs> and I was like, oh my God. So like the, the, the thing is, is it's, it, you go, oh, well I, well, I don't want to stop drinking coffee every day. It, it's not necessarily that. There are a lot of small things, but you've mm. got to take a look at your habits and you're going to go, because a lot of people I know who drink coffee, they don't drink one coffee a day. They'll drink, you know, three or mm. they'll get a double. And maybe, maybe, maybe just don't get a double. Um, I, I don't know how the coffee terminology works, but I assume. Yeah. You, yeah. Well, you, a lot I think of, yeah. a lot of people get stuck in the habit of that. Oh, I'll have a coffee at work and like they're buying this. Mm. And like, we're not saying you can't drink coffee and that's not what this podcast is about. No, you it's, love coffee. Cause I'm not going to, yeah, I love, I love <laughs> and I do buy coffee every now and then I go to the coffee shop and I buy one, but it's more of a reward now. It's not like I have to go and buy one cause I'll make one at home and it's, it tastes, you know, actually it tastes really good, but like it doesn't taste as good as like the, the, the barista made, right? Mm. But it's like the changing habit. Now I've saved so much more money. I haven't calculated, but like the coffee machine cost me 750 bucks. Mm. The beans cost me 30 bucks a month. And then it's just the hot water because I have a long black. And it's, yeah. you know, like it, the amount of money I'm saving, you think about it, like what's five times 30? 150. 150 wait, bucks. Wait, no, wait. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah 150, and that's if I was just buying one coffee. So it's 150 bucks per month and I'm spending actually less than 30 bucks on beans to yeah, run it. Right. Yeah, right. I, I think this um, this concept brings up two really important points that I think is like almost like the pillar things, uh, pillar, pillar reasons why people may struggle. The first thing is it's instant gratification. They're mm. not willing, like if you're not willing to delay it and then put off something to get something else, that, that's what a lot of successful people do. They sacrifice delayed gratification. And then the second main point is perspective. So like some people, I remember you were telling me this about um, a friend of ours that they have no problem going and spending, you know, going out three nights a week to get dinner. Then you tell them, you know, to buy a book. I'm going to spend 20, 25 bucks on a book. Yeah. Oh, I'll just spend 25 bucks on a book. What's that going to do? That book's going to make you more money, open-minded. But like you're going to grow so much more and make some more money or build better relationships from that book than you are from those dinners. Mm. So I think those two are really important. It's perspective and it's also that in, people want that instant gratification rather than... And I, I think that's delaying. something that we really want to change is for people listening and watching this to change that, yeah. help change that perspective. Because yeah. like I wish I like, could just give people that abundance mindset. It's like, well, if you just stop buying coffee <laughs> for a while... And it's hard. Like, and it's invest that money into buying some books and you could learn more, you could actually make more or you can be happier or... You know, and this is like the guy, the, the friend of ours that I was chatting to. Um, I was talking about Audible because yeah, he's just started, you know. Yeah, that's what it was, sorry. Yeah, you know, he's just started with Audible and he realized, okay, it's $15 per month. He instantly sees that as an expense. $15 per month, that's three coffees. <laughs> but when you drink those coffees, you never get that back. You like It's, it's just a, a gratification for now. Like it doesn't really, you don't need to have coffee. Some people will argue with that. They say, yeah, I need it every day. And I have a coffee every single day, but like, he doesn't need to have. Or in his argument, it was dinner. Yeah. Like, so you he's, don't need his, to go he, out for He's dinner, going out three times a week bucks. with his girlfriend and like maybe it could just scale back to one. But he's spending $50 per time. That's 150 bucks per week. And like he doesn't have a, like a, a massive income coming in that he can afford that. You know, when it comes to investing in a book, oh, $15 is expensive. And that's not, and I under, completely understand where he is. And a lot of people are at that. They're like, well, that's like, I don't, like, it's $15 a book, you know. But like, it's, this is what we want to, this is why I really want to discuss it now. It's like, it's, 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 when you look at it long term, these small little changes in mindset, in adjustments, it's like the coffee is just like, yeah, it's just a coffee, you know, you're wasting your money. But it's the mind shift of like actually physically thinking more about, okay, where you're putting your money. Because this obviously, we're talking about money today, right? Mm. It's well, what you're spending your money on, right? Thinking about it and changing it and thinking about how can I invest more in myself to do things? I'll give you an example. I got a massage recently, right? <laughs> <laughs> Whole other story. But yeah, let's, not, it, let's not go into the particulars of that Some people one. say it's an expense, right? But it's, it's, it's a, a, an exercise that I would get, I'll go get a massage for the gratification that's going to make me feel better because I know if I'm feeling better and I'm in a better state, then I can perform better in business, right? It's just like meditation, like investing in a meditation app. It costs me $20 a month. Some people think that's the expense. People happily spend $20 or 
$150 per month on coffee. Like it's nothing. And it's not just coffee. It's like eating out. It's like all these little things, which long-term is actually stopping them from having a happier life. I believe in my belief. Well, I, um, yeah, I, I get you, especially with that. Now, um, this will probably, this statement will probably sort of make a few people uh, maybe less than happy, but I worked in hospitality and I found um, if, well, well, I'm sure there's exceptions to this. If there's any group of people whose money sort of disappears as quickly as it comes in, it's often people in hospitality. Um, because uh, when, I, when I worked and I was a bit more in the perhaps bar scene, a little less restaurants, so I can't say for res- restaurant people, but when I worked in bars and uh, clubs and that, these people would often spend uh, $400 a week going out wow. and uh, drinking and that because it'd be it'd be um, you'd finish it, a lot of the time when I worked they'd finish at midnight or, or 1 a.m or, or even later depending on where the place was um, and they would if, if they had any time left they would go out Friday Saturday Sunday um, usually because I often worked at places that closed at sort of one they would go to the places that closed at uh, like four and you'd go out and they'd go bang 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 hundred dollars of drinks just like that do it again do it again, pay $20 to get in each place, all of a sudden, $360. So I think it's, I, I think uh, one of the things that um, that you really touched on really well, and I think both of you sort of touched on, was that I think it's not about we don't like coffee or we don't like drinks, it's about thinking long-term about your future. Because say if you say if you went, okay, well, I'm only going to go out one of these nights a week if, if you're in that hospitality position, or well, that's $240 you know, a week mm. that you are able to put aside or 10 weeks, that's 2.4, you know, four, you know, and basically if you take a, a year, that's going to end up being somewhere around the vicinity of around about $6,000. And, you know, what could you do with that $6,000? You could do a lot of things. I mean, you could buy, you could buy a car, you can invest into a book, uh, sorry, not a book, you could invest into a, into a business. There's so many different things that you could mm. do. And, and I think it's hard because we all, we all love, we all love instant, um, instant pleasure, instant gratification. Hundred percent. But I, I think what people need to do and what really help is if you know, if people, are, you know, the people who are watching and even like we've sell ourselves, like we've had to do before, is just take a moment and think about the the long term mm. of things. Like, what do I have to gain from this? Because because you're right, people will will look at a book and go like, oh, like mm, twenty bucks, and then. They'll buy a cocktail that costs twenty bucks, and uh, it's it's gone in, in two minutes, and then mm. they'll forget about it for the rest of their life. Yeah. yeah. What really helped me was when you I remember one day you told me to literally write down every expense that had come out of my account, like basically that week. Mm. And I realized how much money was just going <laughs> to bullshit, bro. <laughs> and I was, and I cancelled like, just some subscriptions I forgot about mm. as well, mm. like um, like even with business, like I know like. Frame IO. I didn't even use that for like six months. Um, at one point, I, f- I f- realized I had two Skillshare. Um, like, do you know Skillshare? Yeah. I you had, had two, two memberships. Yeah, bro. <laughs> I, I realized it's two different emails, bro. <laughs> and I canceled both of them. And I had that for like at least uh, three or four months. Yeah, I couldn't right. believe it, man. Like, yep. But like, and there's also like an, the app uh, Pocketbook, which I, I recently um, introduced you to that. Mum introduced to me. So there's an app called Pocketbook where you put in your card details for it. And then it like goes to your account and it basically shows you and like divides up where you spend your money. Mm. So you can literally, and it will send me notifications that like you spent $200 this week. Yep. That's I'm cool. Like, I might get Where did I spend $200? We'll some of those things I reckon in the yeah, comments. Yeah, yeah. There's, there's a couple yeah. of books because like- And some books as well. By all means, I'm no money expert. Like I'm still on the journey. Um, but I'm very grateful for what I learned a couple of years ago around managing because now I'm more in a, in a better situation. Uh because I've gone out and learned that and I want to pass the books on. So there's a couple of books we'll link down. There's, there's Rich Dad, Poor Dad, which is a famous one everyone should yeah. read and listen. Uh, the Latte Factor, The Barefoot Investor. I think the Barefoot Investor is really good for, like that one's made for like the average person yep. nine to five to actually save, get out of debt and save money. Yep. Not like an investing like stocks and yeah, stuff. Even like, same with this one. Like it's not stocks and stuff. It's like- nope. How, it's a very simple story. Like this is income. really simple. So if anyone, it's going to cost you like 20 bucks. <laughs> four coffees. That's four for how much this has saved me and made me like thousands, like tens of thousands of dollars for me because yeah. I run a company and, and I've applied those things. But just understanding the mindset of that, I think for today's podcast is really powerful for people who are listening or watching this is to 
really start thinking about what are you spending on it, right? Because like the title of this book is like the latte factor, but it also says the automatic millionaire. And it, she, it shares a secret how you can become a millionaire in the next 20 years by doing this latte factor, which I recommend for people to go read the book because I can't remember the full, <laughs> I'm not going to quote the book, but it teaches you the strategy, which is a very simple strategy that can literally help you make money. Yeah. Save money. Would you like the small little factor of like five, ten dollars, you know? Yeah. I think what will be good to get into now is a bit more of the mindset side. Obviously, we're not we're not financial experts. We're not going to, we're not giving financial advice. We're just saying t- telling just you like our lessons. sharing books, lessons. So I want to get into the mindset of it a little bit because, like, if you have a habit of drinking two coffees a day, buying those coffees as well, or you're in a habit of going out, mm. or you're in a habit of you know spending money as soon as it comes in. How do you get out of that? Mm. Like what? What, what, what's the first step you can take? Because that, that's just purely mindset. It's not like a, like that's in pretty much what it is. First thing that comes up for me is change your environment. Mm. Mm. So it, like example, when, when you guys, when Colby invites me out for a Friday night, Saturday night. <laughs> right? you, you mean when you, you, uh, you uh, I'll be honest, you budget I, for that as well. You, yeah, I, I, have, <laughs> I have budgeted for my nights out and I put money away for it. Um, but I, you know, I could be putting that towards <laughs> towards something else. Right? I, I like to say that you, <laughs> in, you invite me to invite you out. Okay, I, I sometimes I invite Kobe out. Uh, <laughs> but the point I'm trying to share is just like change your environment. So if I wanted to save that money of not going out, because I I do enjoy the weekend. I'm not, we're not saying you can't enjoy your coffee, you can't do that. But mm-hmm. but if you're consciously aware that okay, well, you are you struggling to pay your bills, or struggling to pay off your credit card, or struggling to pay rent. It, there is a, there is an issue that you might need to address. And I have had the issue where I was like, shit, I have no, I was two weeks behind rent. I had no money and I was only $10,000 a month. And I was like, what the hell is going on? And it was because of the environment of, I didn't consciously know where the money was going. And when I became aware of it, I changed my environment and said, you know what? This is never happening again. And I looked at the reason what I'm looking for longer is I wanted to be debt free. Because most of us, like we, everyone thinks about money every single day. Like we, like we all think about it. Mm. It's all worry. If you had only a thousand dollars left in your bank account and you knew you had three thousand dollars worth of expenses coming out in the next three weeks, you're gonna be stressing the fuck out. And it's gonna cause stress in other areas of your life and your relationship. It's gonna like this is why it's an even if it's just like a coffee, it's five dollars. It all adds up. These are the, the bigger thing. Like it is it, the money affects so many different areas of your life. So for changing and, and for the mindset of things, it's like look at the people you're around. If you're around and I'm gonna label it broke people guess what? <laughs> You're going to be broke, right? So it's not about going and changing your whole friendship group, but start to hang around people who have more money or have better understanding of it. And this is how you start to change your habit because you ask them, okay, wh- what are you doing, right? And this is the example that I learned five years ago when I first started out my entrepreneur. I think it's model success. Model the people who have what you want. So if you want more money or you don't want to be stressing about money and you want to enjoy your coffee, ask what success people are doing. Hang around them. So the first one will be change environment. We're going to change the habit, change the environment. So get out of the situation, whatever's causing it. It's just like when a friend calls you up, hey, let's go out. You know, do you really, <laughs> I, I do want to go out if you call me, uh, but do you really want to go out with them? Do, or you feel like you're forced to, and maybe it's saying no more often. Because a lot of the time we say yes, even when we don't have money. We look at bank account. Like, like I know I used to when I was a young teenager going out with my friends and like I had some great times, right? Don't get me wrong. I've spent some money and had some great times. We all have. But I remember looking at my bank account. Oh, I've got 50 bucks. Slab's 54 bucks. Hey, man, you got four bucks? <laughs> <laughs> and we're going to slab a piece and we'll go out and they'll drink. And that would be the. But a lot of people are still stuck in that. Yeah. Right? And so the way I got out of it is I changed my environment. I changed the people I hang around to change those habits and started reading books and started investing that money into books and started making small habit changes. So my, my advice would be that. The first, um, the first, because in many ways, in many ways, in truth, you can almost look at um, like like a habit, sort of like an addiction, because that's often what they become. Because if you know, people stress out, they freak out when they're pulled away from it. It's almost something necessary. It becomes like that. And the first step of really getting past anything like that is yeah, admitting that it's a problem. So I think. I don't know remember which one of you mentioned it. it self-aware. Um, yeah, yep, self-awareness. But actually cataloging your expenses is a really good way to realise how much of a problem they, they can be. Because a lot of people go, oh, well, no, I only get a coffee uh, here and there. I only get uh, this this snack, this thing here and there. Like, like pff, it can't add up to that much. 
But the what, you, what I think everyone at home should do is is actually for let's say two weeks. Thirty days. Thirty, 30 days 30, is a good one. Day, that I wrote. That's what we did with good. Blake. He wrote down because like I did that. Mm. I looked back thirty days. And I was like, shit, six hundred dollars <laughs> yeah, on so, takeaway. So for, so for thirty <laughs> days, just record everything you mm. spend money 100%. on, absolutely everything, and then you'll actually see the true amount that is spent on all of these sort of um, insignificant, really not that meaningful things. Because a lot of these things, you're like, oh, I really enjoy it. Well, so yeah, you enjoy it for five minutes, and then you forget it ever happened. That's, that's, that's kind of how it is. And so when you actually admit that you, you have, a, have a problem with this because you can actually see the results, then you can go, all right, it's time to fix this problem because mm. now I admit that it's there. So with what you said, uh, which I think is really important as well, is like it's it's a habit. Mm. And I've been reading a couple of books up on this. So <laughs> we're going to link that book as well. One book I highly recommend is called Atomic Habits. There's four things to a habit. It's the cue, the craving, the... Uh, the action and the reward. So like if you're if like for example, if you are walking to work and you always get a coffee at this coffee shop, the cue might be the smell of the beans. It might be the way you walk to work. That's the cue. And as soon as you get cued, he messages you to go out. Cue. And now you build a craving. Oh, I want to go out. I want to go out. And then the action is go out. So same thing with spending money. It's a cue, whether it's a smell of coffee, uh, smell of coffee beans, You where you wake up and you make a coffee straight away, that's your cue, your cues you wake up mm. and it builds a craving. So same thing with spending. You walk past a shop and you see like like something you like, that's a cue and then you go in and you start craving. You're like, oh, I need it right now. So you're making decisions like an emotion and a habit is something that is automated um, that you've built into your system. So you got like I would highly recommend reading that book because it helps you to like break habits and form new ones because that's what spending is. Like if you're in this spending habit of going out, it's a it's a habit, and habits are automated rooms to make things easier for yourself. Um, so when you have a bad spending habit, you got to find out what is the the trigger, the cue. Like as soon as I'm guessing, <laughs> if you message him to go out, he's probably thinking, oh, like maybe that, he's building craving. Mm. Like thinking it because you've you've set the trigger. <laughs> yeah, you, you know what I, that what yeah, how it, it often, how true so know, is that? I know what yeah, the cue it, is. It, yeah. it, it often happens that uh, I so I have, you block him. I have no intention. <laughs> so we know what a good time. We know what a good time. But, but, we, but we're Friday spending. Night, spending <laughs> is spending's the same thing. You might smell coffee. You build craving. Action. You buy it. It's it's everything in life. Whether it's that or beers or or you, whatever you spend your money on. It most a lot of things you spend your money on that are daily are habits. I, yeah, and you got to break. And I, and I you try and break that. I think the one thing that Remove the cue. that we should remind people of is we're not telling you to not have fun. Like, have fun, have a really awesome time, but just take into account, you know, all the, all the different things that you might really not need to do, like all those little extras, all those little things. You know, you know, because uh, like you said, um, Ayrton, when you were talking about it. Now for you, coffee's kind of more like a reward than sort of just just a habit, isn't it? Mm. And so sometimes it is good to turn those little habits, those little things that you know you sort of want to do all the time, and you're like, oh yeah, oh yeah, like I need this, you know, I go get this. Turn it into a reward instead. Mm-hmm. Like you might have your favorite, um, uh, let's use an example or something. You might love churros, and you know what? Every day. Yeah, in the afternoon. I the think evening. sorry, I think for Ayrton it's donuts. Donuts. Let's say it it's definitely donuts. donuts. <laughs> is it donuts? Do you matter? All right, all right. Let's say it's donuts. It is, but donuts. that's a reward. So Every time we go to Seven Eleven, you're always like, "That's get, why." I do donuts. That's actually, actually, this that's is the, the cue. Interesting, interesting thing. <laughs> that's the cue. I don't go to Seven Eleven because I know that's what's going to happen. So you change your environment. Yeah. Remove the cue. R- remove Seven Eleven. Remove yeah. the trigger. So I feel up at uh, Caltex. <laughs> so that anyway, I was just saying, it is donuts. Yeah, well, anyway. th- no, that's like the thing. And now you can turn donuts into a reward. You know, if you go, oh, I've done really good today. I'll go get a donut. Rather than, or oh, should I get a donut? I don't know. I guess it's a hard thing to sort of put into perspective, I guess. But it's also not feeling bad. Like mm. when you go out, you budget for it. So it's like, if I, okay, I'm going to yeah, have think that's four great. coffees a week. If you put 30 bucks, like... In, like, in, for example, in the Barefoot Investor, it has a splash money account, which it says you're not allowed to have any money in that account by the end of the week. It's your fun account. Mm. So that is your guilt-free, go buy whatever the hell you want. It's telling you, like, don't save that money, that 10%, I think it's like 10% or whatever, that splash account, go and spend it. Yeah, I have so one if you're of- budgeting, yeah, if you're budgeting for going out, it's just when you're, like, transferring out your savings to, like, 
add more to it. That's if you're cool. transferring out of your savings to uh, go out and, oh, and man, get that, smashed, that was me. you have some problems. That was me. <laughs> like, I'm just going to be pretty blunt on that one. Like, if you're going, oh, man, I'm out of money, but, well, but the mates want to go out for a drink and you're like, it's all right, I'll dip into my savings. It's like, you've got a problem. That's me. No, that was me. Yep. You, you had a problem. And, and this is <laughs> why we want to address it. Now, and I want but. this to trigger people who are like, oh, but I really want to have a good time. It's like, we're not saying you can't have a good time. But maybe it's just thinking for your future, like where you want to be, the things you're doing now, if you consistently do them, like there's always going to be another party. There's always going to be another weekend to go out. It's always, yeah. There's always going to be another birthday. Everyone. Well, look at it. Like, look at it. Um, cause I, uh, change it. As someone who, who myself, uh, I, look, I look at myself as a bit of a traveler and obviously as, uh, as the world uh, comes back to normal, I'm going to be doing lots of traveling. Is think of it like this. If you maybe went to... 10, 20 less parties this year. Next year, you could go party in France or Germany because you've saved up this money, you know, because you didn't go out and party 20 times. So you, what, you yep. saved 150 bucks every time. Oh, there you go. Mm. Here's your, you know, $3,000 for your plane tickets or something of the like. So, so an interesting one. Let's, let's, to give some people some, some tangible yeah, advice some tangible. Uh, based on our experiences. Um, obviously, we're not giving financial advice, but we're going to give some, some. It's more like habit mindset. Habit, habit mindset. Is like it is. becoming aware of your spending is really important, I think. Mm. Even if you're just aware of it. Because then like you naturally you're going to start to think of it more and really assess when you go to buy that thing. Do I really have money for that, right? Uh, there's some books that we've recommended on this podcast that I highly recommend just like go and buy them. Like even if you don't have a budget for them right now. That would be like the most important thing is buy them over like your next coffee. Like just skip out and coffee for the next week or next month and buy these books. Um because just those subtle changes, becoming more aware of it, you'll, you'll still be able to have these fun times, but you'll be more aware of your money and you'll be able to save more to be able to invest more in the things that do matter to you, which bring you more fulfillment in your life, right? So the ultimate thing is like now think about, so books is obviously one thing I'm going to recommend, changing your environment, but setting a goal also for what you want to have. Like just what Colby said, like if it's going to less parties means you can go to 20 parties next year in France, <laughs> is an example. <laughs> Right, obviously with COVID and stuff, the borders might not be open just yet. But yeah, you'd have you'd have to. Get but a, if it's somewhere some wherever you are, or France. it's traveling, or it's you know, it maybe it is buying a new car, a new car, a new house, a new house, or, or or anything like having a goal towards you have something to work towards. Then you can start making these calculations and think about that coffee factor is then to reduce. Okay, maybe that five or ten dollars. I'm just going to put because I'm still going to have. You might still have your coffee, but you're going to put ten dollars away each day into another account for that thing that you're working towards next year. And over a year's time, it's 10, what's 10 times 365? 10 3,000 times 365. Just put a zero. Just put a zero. 3,000. Like how massive would that be in a year's time? And just mm. imagine if you just did that as a base and then every now and then you put some more money in that account and that account's working towards a car or it's working towards a house. Or it's working towards that business you want to start, right? Just this, and that's where the $10... Coffee, why why spending ten dollars in coffee is keeping me broke? Because you're not putting that if you put that ten dollars back into you, as in like as in investing in you into you, like an account. Just imagine where you'll be in a year's time. Yeah. And I think it comes down to the importance of investing in your future self, not not just perhaps the whims of your immediate self. Because you know, obviously, we're all going to want lots of instant gratification or lots of really just nice sort of, oh, like, ooh, 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 like a oh, piece of candy, piece of candy, <laughs> like that sort of mentality. But, you know, think about your future self. I think, like, I think that's a great idea, like $10 away. Um, I've, got a, I've got a friend who um, they went to, so this is, this is perhaps a bit more on the line of investment, but, like, you can do it in, in standard things as well, is he puts away $100 a week. And then the truth is we can all, you know, anyone, I reckon if, you, if you've 50, got full yeah. time, obviously it's, it's a little harder for some people. If you've got people to support, maybe bring it down to 50 or so. But, uh, you know, so let's say 50. Put aside $50 a week, you know, like you said, and then pretty quickly that, that builds up. That's like $2,500 a year. You know, and if if time goes on, eventually you'll find, oh, oh man, I've got this, this $10,000 that's just sitting here after like, you know, a couple of years of doing this. But And, and, the, and the thing as well is good habits – breed good habits, bad habits, breed bad habits. Just like you said, if you want to do well, hang around with people who do well. If you want to develop good habits, 
you need to start investing into having some good habits because it's just going to, you're going to improve because once you get that mindset, which is uh, as Ed and, and, and you as well, Blake, you know, go on about because it is super, super important is trying to breed these good habits is going to develop a good habit mindset. And then all of a sudden you're going to have way more good habits and you're going to get way, way more for sure. Yeah. I think it was tricky for people is that like, I remember when I used to get a weekly wage, if you're working full time, let's say the average income is like 60 K after tax, you only get a grand a week. It looks pretty good when you, when you open your bank account and there's a grand sitting there and it's Thursday, mm. tomorrow's Friday. I'm rich, <laughs> you know, it's sort of that, it's, it's a hard thing to do. And like, it's, it would always be better if you opened it up and there's only 800 bucks and well, that's, two, that's, 200 was already gone. Oh, is that what it, yeah, That's why I like the lot. Like yeah. as soon as it got bang, gone, 200 bucks. We, we Like I won't, uh, cause like obviously I can't give some visuals, but like, this is like, you automate that. Like when it mm. lands, you have like automatic payments come out. So like that that's $10, perfect. you don't manually, cause you'll forget it as you want to make it automatic. So like, the book, The Latte Factor, talks all about that, is, is making it automatic, making like figuring out what your expenses are, figuring out all that sort of stuff. But then as soon as that paycheck hits, it just disperses. Because like, yeah, like the example is most people get that same feeling. Thursday, like I remember I'm, I used to work at a Caltex and like everyone got paid on the Thursday and like, oh, I'm getting paid today. And then they talk about where they're spending all their money. <laughs> and I'm just like, because I was the same, I was like, oh yeah, I'm, I'm going to be spending on it. Like, but I was like started with my business. Like I want to buy a camera. So like I was like buying a camera. That was my goal at one point. Oh, everyone's just like money hits the bank account. It's gone. And by the next Thursday, like Wednesday, they're like, you know, they're scraping the pennies. And it was interesting actually, because at working at the service station, I saw it same with customers. Everyone would come fill, fill up on Thursday. <laughs> They'll fill their tank <laughs> and it'll be full. It gets to like, Wednesday, they're putting like 10 bucks, five bucks in or 10 bucks in just so they can get to Thursday again. It was, I literally saw that so many times and people would say this. It's like, oh, just putting 10 bucks in, wait until payday. When it gets to payday, they'll come in because it'll be the same customers. They'll spend 50, 60 bucks on fuel, which they'll go, if they're in a full drive or something, go full driving for the weekend, beers. And like, and then they're having a good time. They're having a go, but like, it's just the the same thing would be happening ever again and again. And I can I know people listening to this mm. can relate to that. I, I, it's even worse because um, at least the bit, I think it's uh, similar. Yeah, sorry, um, common hospitality is when you get paid fortnightly because then you're yeah. like it's like fat. It's like government. It's, stuff. it's like fat. Uh, government. Uh, no, I know. Like, I don't. Well, yeah, hospital, when when I used to work hospitality, I, I got paid fortnightly. What am I saying? I'm saying um, hospitals. Hospital. Hospitally. Yeah. No, I'm, Hospital. I'm well, not, like, not a qualified physician. Well, uh, like, but I get paid fortnightly. I'd be like, oh, fat stacks. <laughs> and then, it's double. It's and two then, grand. And then it's the second week and you're like, oh, no, what have I done? Because you just look at it and you're like, ah, oh, yeah. you know, uh, say, so we're, say we're working average full time in hospital. You're like, oh, yeah, two grand. Like, mm, sweet. And then all of a sudden you get to the next week and, and you're coming up on the, the neck of the fortnightly Thursday and <laughs> you're clutching with this $5 in your account, eating your last biscuit, praying for that pay to come in. Yeah. I think, I think I've used gold coins to fill up once before, like <laughs> under $5. I've I was, done that, mate. I was yeah. literally like, I just remember like, this was like, uh, uh, yeah, it, I mean, it was a while ago, but I remember actually when I was doing it, I was literally like, I'm gonna remember, like I'm gonna remember this because one day I'm gonna never have to do this again. So like sometimes I just I I used to think that heaps. Like if I fill out five dollar note, ten dollar. Have notes. you ever done the thing where like uh, they cause back when they they not all stations have all the automated payment where you type it in where you sort of like just just pumping the nozzle ever so slightly because like get those extra. I, I can't go up five dollars. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> one time I I used to spend my money so much I would try and get it to be like five dollars and two cents. Bro, so I was just down. about to say that it would round <laughs> so down. Round down. I remember that I was it's like so I was stupid. so so broke that I would just try and like get that two cents everywhere I went. Like no matter what I would do, like oh, it's got to be two cents. So ran it down. If, if you get a hundred, those people when they came in. <laughs> if you go to a hundred petrol stations, you save like two dollars, uh, a dollar or something. It's 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 so good. I I actually um, there was one time where I was um, so so broke and I was I was hungry and I didn't have any food for the week and I I noticed that Uber was doing a thing where you got like you signed up and you got like five dollars free. <laughs> so I was sign up. Create a new account. I, would, I created five accounts and ordered separate meals equating to less than five dollars. <laughs> so you had an Uber driver drive ten minutes out to my house to give me a small chip from them, McDonald's. They all rock up at the same time. <laughs> and I was like, I did that, and I was like, Colby, this is pathetic. 
this is you're pathetic. You have to change. <laughs> oh wow! <laughs> and I, that, like, I think after that, I looked at myself and I was like, "Bro, you're filthy. <laughs> you need to sort your life out." Because with the Uber driver, the look he gave me when he drove like ten minutes to give me a small chips from McDonald's. How much would he have gotten paid? Like, I don't know. Less than he deserves <laughs> for putting up with me. But um, yeah, it, it's it's That's just. Funny. It's it's just it's just one of those things um, with 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 money with anything you just have to try and develop a uh, good habits. Understand. But so, so what, what's, you know um, what, what's well, the ultimate lesson today? I think I think Anton's kind of um, yeah. So the, what was the first thing you said? It was change your environment. Mm. Yeah. So it is it is like not just like the physical environments. It's it's the people you hang around. It's the well, if you if you've got bad habits like of spending money on coffee. And like it's that coffee shop. Stop going to the coffee shop for a little bit and start thinking about where you're spending your money. Like just ch- changing some things like that is really going to help with the mindset around money. That's that's the, that's what we're trying to bring awareness we'll, we'll, from this podcast is to bring awareness around it. We're not saying you can't have fun. We're not saying you can't drink coffee. We're saying that it's becoming more aware of it. When you're more of aware of where your money's going, and you'll start to make you'll make you'll start to make better decisions, mm. right? which will then create better habits for you, which will help you get things you want in life. Yeah. It's, it's, it's crazy. When you start to think about where your money's going, you actually start to make more money because then you're more aware. Well, let's, uh, well let's, I, think, I think that's a great, uh, great thing to, to round off with, with that, with that lesson there. So, you know, everyone, everyone at home, that's, that's the lesson, isn't it, really? Is yeah, to, basically. Is, and yeah, it's, it's, it's most important thing is to educate yourself. Like we're going to put some links below from mm. a couple of books we think uh, two on, okay, I think, oh, two or three or whatever. Uh, one on habits, a couple yeah, on. Yeah, like, there'll be some links below on investing. YouTube. Let's we'll, check this we'll, out. We'll do a little bit, a bit more research. But we'll have them below um, as a really important way to educate yourself and actually, you know, it, it's all about grow, growing as a person and developing better habits and becoming better. Um, but what's one final key takeaway? What was the 30 day thing that we said? I think, to I track think your so, expenses? so for everyone at home, so everyone who's watching, when, when you're at home, make a 30-day rec- record of all the money that you spend and all the different things that you spend it on and actually take a look and realise where some of your money might be going astray. And then from there, you'll actually start to realise the different ways that you can improve because in 30 days, you can see a lot. It's the common goal that we often always set. So go go home or go well, be at home. <laughs> you're already at home, watching from home. Is do 30 days of recording all the money that you spend, and then from there you'll actually start to see where you can make a difference. But anyway, thank you for watching, guys. I'm Colby from the 5,000 Week Journey, and we look forward to seeing you next time. Mm-hmm.